Hi there. If you are in nursing school or medical assisting school or medical school or any type of school where you are going to learn to take care of patients, there's one thing that you will have in common and one piece of equipment that you will need and need to know how to use it correctly. What is that piece of equipment? A stethoscope. In this video, I'm going to share some tips, some information and how to use a stethoscope. If you are a returning visitor, welcome back and a big thank you for your support. If you are new here, then let me welcome you to my YouTube channel and to my nursing channel. My name is Nurse Master Charlie. I am a registered nurse and on my channel, I talk about and share about nursing, nursing school related topics and tips, as well as health related topics, tips and information. So getting right into the video. One of the most used pieces of clinical equipment you will use in nursing school or medical assisting school, CNA school or medical school, and any other health related area of study will be a stethoscope. And you will not only use it in school and clinical training, but also when you are working in your chosen profession. First of all, you don't need an expensive stethoscope. A less expensive stethoscope works just as well as the expensive ones, especially with constant practice and use. But if it's in your budget or you want to upgrade, especially after you graduate nursing school, medical assisting school, or even med school, the more expensive ones let you hear slightly better due to the quieter tubing and better overall chest piece and overall construction. I started off in medical assisting school with a $25 to $30 Sprague report stethoscope made by Prestige Medical. But years later, when I went to nursing school, I upgraded to a $50 to $75 Littman stethoscope. After I graduated nursing school, and as I was going to be working in the critical care area, I gifted myself a master cardiology stethoscope, another Littman, which was a little bit more pricey, but I wanted to hear or listen to heart and lung sounds with a little bit more intensity and clarity. Today in the clinic I work in, I use a stethoscope every day that probably costs between $10 and $20 to do blood pressures and occasionally listen to lung sounds. This is the stethoscope I use every day. There is not even any information on branding on as to who makes it, but it works just fine. But if you desire a higher end stethoscope, then save a little or ask for it as a gift. It is nice to have one, but not necessary. I'll leave some links in the description for different stethoscopes that you can check out. Some of the ones that I use and have used and some that I recommend, but I must disclose that they are affiliate links. Also in the description are links to the equipment that I recommend for nursing school. If you are interested, I have a nursing school haul video where I share my nursing school equipment tips and some bonus information. I'll put a link at the end of this video and in the description, so be sure to check that out. So back to stethoscopes. A stethoscope is used to listen to heart sounds, lung sounds, abdominal or stomach sounds, blood pressure sounds, and even sounds in the carotid arteries, which are located in the neck. So this is a stethoscope. And by looking at it, it seems simple enough. And if a person has watched a medical, nursing, fire, or police drama on TV, you have watched a character put one end of the stethoscope into their ears and the other onto the patient. So let's take a closer look at the stethoscope. If you look at the stethoscope straight, it seems to be pretty universal, where you put the small pieces into the ears and the other part onto the patient. Aha, it is that simple with a couple of small adjustments to make it do what a stethoscope is supposed to do. So first, let's look at the ear tubes. If you look at these from the side, these are not exactly straight. They are angled and angled for a reason. The reason being is so that the ear tips, these pieces can go into the ears at the same angle of the ear canal. It may seem that the ear canal goes completely sideways or lateral, which it does to a degree, but the ear canal actually angles slightly towards the back of the head. That is why the ear tubes of the stethoscope are angled forward. So they go into the ear canal at that angle, which allows sound to travel with ease in the right direction. So when you put the ear pieces into your ears, first take a look at the tubes, making sure that they're angling towards the eyes or the nose, and then insert the ear pieces into the ears. Then listen to whatever you're going to listen to. If you put them in backwards, they may not allow you to hear the best sound as best as you could, which defeats the purpose of the stethoscope. And they also may not be as comfortable. Next, we have the tubing of the stethoscope, which transfers the sound or the frequencies to the ear tubes, ultimately to the ear tips, then to the ear canal, so a person can then hear what they are listening to. On the other end, the tubing then connects to the stem. The stem is what connects the chest piece to the tubing. And this is the chest piece. If you didn't know, stethos actually means chest. So it makes sense that this is what the stethoscope is designed around and also called a stethoscope. But what if it was called a chestoscope? Because that's what it's actually listening primarily to 
the chest. The chest piece is what all these other pieces are designed to work for. It is what it is actually used to listen with. Some stethoscopes have a two-sided chest piece, which consists of a diaphragm on one side and a bell on the other. Some of these types can be rotated, which uses a ball bearing to allow the chest piece to be clicked into place to whichever side is needed to be used. Why does it matter which side is used? It matters because of the types of sounds to be listened to. The larger side, which is known as the diaphragm, can be used to listen to larger areas that generate higher frequencies, like lung or breath sounds, and bowel or abdominal sounds. So if you are listening to lung sounds, for example, and you cannot hear anything, you may have to rotate the chest piece at the stem to open and allow, and allow sound to travel to that side. To amplify the sound, to hear these sounds best, the diaphragm should be held firmly against the skin. The smaller side of the chest piece is known as the bell. It is the cone-shaped side and is used to listen to lower frequency sounds as in heart sounds and murmurs. To amplify the sound and hear it best, the bell should be held lightly against the skin. To test which side of the chest piece is open, whether the bell side or the diaphragm side, once you have the ear pieces in your ears, you can gently tap the side that you will be using. If when you tap it, there is no sound, then just turn the chest piece to the open side that you will be using and you will be able to hear from that particular side. Some stethoscopes may only have one side, which acts as a bell and a diaphragm. The sound is actually being heard and determined by the amount of pressure applied to the area being listened to. These are known as tunable or pressure sensitive diaphragms that can act both as a bell and a diaphragm. A master cardiology is an example of this type of stethoscope that has this type of chest piece. One thing I would like to mention is cleaning your stethoscope and it needs to be done between each patient. Stethoscopes these days are meant to be cleaned very easily. The Libman company recommends cleaning your stethoscope with 70% alcohol solution, not to use hand sanitizer as a cleaning agent as there are many additives that may damage parts of the stethoscope. Do not immerse your stethoscope in any liquid or subject it to any sterilization process. Do not overexpose your stethoscope to extreme heat, extreme cold, or solvents or oils. Tunable diaphragms can be removed from the chest piece and their surfaces wiped with alcohol or soapy water. Dry all parts thoroughly before reassembling. Ear tips can be removed from the ear tubes for thorough cleaning. For safety, snap ear tips firmly back onto the ribbed ends of the ear tubes. So to review, ear tubes should be angled forward. Make sure you turn the chest piece to the correct side if yours turns. Remember the diaphragm is the larger side and is used to listen to lung or breath sounds or bowel or abdominal sounds. The bell is used to listen to heart sounds and murmurs. Remember to apply the correct pressure. The larger diaphragm, which is used for higher frequencies, is best amplified when the diaphragm is held firmly against the skin. The bell, the smaller side, is used to listen to lower frequency sounds and it's best to amplify these sounds by using light pressure against the skin. Remember to clean your stethoscope between each patient and also remember to wash your hands between each patient. So if you found value in this video and learned a little something, please be sure to give this video a like as it helps out my channel. Also, if you are a student of any discipline that uses stethoscopes, whether it be nursing, medical assisting, nursing assisting, please share this video with your friends or colleagues. And if you are interested in health information and nursing related content like this, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and be part of my nursing channel. And also hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos. If you are interested in what type of equipment and supplies I recommend for nursing school, see my nursing school hall video. And I'll also leave links in the description for that. And as I mentioned earlier, they are affiliate links. Please be sure to check out my many other nursing topic related videos, which range from nursing assessments to the five rights of medication administration, as well as my nursing and health related music lyric videos here on YouTube. If you are not aware, I write and create nursing and health related educational music, like my songs, What is Diabetes? Check Your Feet, The Flu Shot Song, and The Nursing Process Song, What Are Vital Signs Song, to name a few. So if you like music and you wanna learn a little something at the same time, please be sure to check those out. You can also listen to my music on all music streaming platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Pandora, etc. So be sure to check out my nursing blog on my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. I post new nursing and health blog articles weekly related to what I share here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I'll also leave links in the description for that. So until the next video, go save lives and make a difference. God bless and goodbye.